you all there, I believe we are now live streaming for this Coffee with Tyler. Welcome. Well, and uh, first, I want to apologize for anybody that is still hanging on watching on Channel 955 on the live stream. I apologize. I was delayed in getting here. Um, we had a little technical difficulty, but ultimately, my mistake. So, um, welcome to this edition of Coffee with Tyler. It is Thursday. May 13th. Mike, do you see me on that TV out there? I'll be right with you. All right. Yes, I got All right. There we go. So, so just uh, we have a few audience members live. And uh, thanks to my IT guy, Mike, uh, for doing some, <laughs> some B-roll for me. Appreciate that, Mike. You got it. Um, let's join us in the first sip of coffee. <laughs> All right. So, what's on everybody's mind? What's going on here at East Castle? I'm just nervous that the flowers are going to get frostbitten that they're planting out there. So, Carolyn, great question, great point, because we have the same, I had the same concern because I was all gung ho on making sure we had flowers for Mother's Day yes. and in the pots, which Dustin, our head landscaper, had concerns about, to exactly your point. They made it through the frost. And I was watching the news last night and they said there is no, they are 80% confident, again that's a weatherman 80%, so take that with a grain of salt, <laughs> um, that we will have no longer need to worry for frost wow. until mm -hmm. fall. And so we are over the hump. Mm -hmm. And the lows are in now the 40s, um, are, are the lows instead of the 30s. So um, we think we're going to be okay. Uh, we're getting the, the planters and the pots um, squared away. Had the opportunity to walk around campus with Dustin and Jesus. Uh, if you have seen uh, Jesus, he's one of our newest members to the team. Um, he's going to work alongside uh, uh, Dustin. Both have landscaping experience. Mm -hmm. Both work together, actually in a former senior living community and did landscaping. And so um, I walked with them, kind of showed them some plans um, that is the vision, um, so to speak, for what East Castle Place will look like. Um, we'll be doing some mulching um, around the flower beds and the entrances. We're also going to be taking up the cutting garden. Um, so I want to make sure to mention that. That's right outside the contemporary uh, building uh, where we have a resident request to to till up some ground, mm -hmm. add some soil, and then they will plant some flowers that I believe is open to all residents. You can cut whatever flowers you may want um, and take them and that's what it will be. So, um, it's actually right up here outside mm -hmm. Lindsay Hall, um, so outside the contemporary door. So, um, if you have questions, see Dustin, see one of the garden committee members, um, Barbara Hill for instance as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. And she suggests that when you take a flower, just stop and do a little deadheading. Mm. Great and suggestion. Great suggestion. So the suggestion was if you do stop and cut a flower, um, do some deadheading mm -hmm. as well, which I believe uh, I remember doing deadheading growing up with my mom yes. and dad in the garden. You take off all the dead ones so that the fresh ones can get the yes. proper nutrients. So right. great suggestion. Tyler. Yes. You have your mask off and so do the ladies. Well, we're vaccinated. Can I take it off? Yes. Are you so, making an announcement? Uh, we will make an announcement um, here that, um, so question from uh, Ms. Houston who's in the, in the audience is, um, I don't have my mask on and there's ladies around that don't either. And the reason for that is the CDC, as you know, have come out and said, if everybody's vaccinated that you're around, masks are not necessarily required, although always is up to the discretion of, of individuals. Now, we will maintain that as we're walking around the common areas um, in the community, um, we will and require A, employees will still be masked at all times. B, for residents, I do still request and ask you um, as you're walking to get your mail, as we're kind of moving about the common areas, um, to continue to wear your masks. 
But in smaller group settings where, again, I'm six feet away from you, um, socially distanced, and again, the chairs are for a little bit further apart, it is okay to, to take down your masks and to have those conversations. And again, we are, again, CDC came out with that recommendation about four to six weeks ago. We took still the very, very cautious approach, as I feel, felt very confident in, to still wear face masks, even in those small group settings, and then we allowed for the presenters to take the masks off. And so we're taking it kind of to that next step where in the smaller group settings um, and in the presenters. So for instance, when we have state of the castles, I'll still ask that residents wear their masks because it's not necessarily that formal, informal discussion as I'll call it. And it's a larger group setting. And in larger group settings, as you've seen at ballparks and things of that nature, again, we're not to the thousands of people or anything, masks are still being required and asked to be worn. But in smaller settings, I know all of you ladies have been vaccinated. I myself have been vaccinated. Nobody is presenting any symptoms of any sort, fever, nausea, runny nose, headache, all those fun stuff, or, or not fun stuff, all that bad stuff. And so again, I feel very comfortable in sitting here with you. Um, and again, if one of you were to say, you know what, Tyler, I'm not, I would by all means respect that request. Mm -hmm even if it is just one out of a group of five, and I will put my mask on. And, and so again, that, that's just some of the caution that, that we're utilizing as part of the relaxation of, of the restrictions. Now, to that point, Ms. Houston, you also probably saw that the dining room has been relaxed mm -hmm. further as well. It's my mm -hmm. And so the dining room now, we're having more individuals sit together and we're, we're relaxing the six feet social distancing. We still are requiring reservations as we still want to make sure and monitor the capacity of the dining room. And we ask that you come to the dining room with your mask on, but during dining service, take your mask off and, and enjoy. And then as you exit, put your mask back on. And so again, that in large part is due to A, the COVID-19 rate in Milwaukee County is less than 5%. B, all of our residents have been vaccinated. Um, and I'm confident and I say that because I know that two months ago, I said 99%, there are still two residents. Those two residents have since been vaccinated um, after further, obviously, due diligence by their physicians. And so I'm, I'm safely and confidently saying that 100% of residents have been vaccinated. Does that mean that COVID is no longer a threat and that we've conquered COVID? Absolutely not. Well, what that does mean is that we're able to take those next steps in relaxing those restrictions. And so again, um, that's why you saw the notice um, in, in the, uh, from Carlos in the dining, dining room. And again, that's why in these smaller group settings and as you're visiting with your neighbors, um, again, that is up to you. Um, again, I will still encourage it. I will still ensure that employees are wearing masks. That's why you see your server's mask. And I don't see that going away from our employees at any time soon. I will still mandate that visitors wear masks because although they may say they've been vaccinated and they can show me the card, just a comfort level that I want to protect you and protect uh, the East Castle community. Same thing with vendors. And again, that's why visitors are still not allowed in the dining rooms and in the activity areas. Um, again, because again, that confidence level that I have with you as residents um, is much greater than you know, the visitors. And it's not that I don't trust the visitors and that they've had their vaccines, it's just they're out and about even more than some of us. So again, I don't want you to think, and, and for those of you viewing this, I don't want you to think that Tyler said COVID is solved. We're not worried about anything. We're back to normal. Um, hip, hip, hooray. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is we need to continue to take our next steps to getting back to what we'll call our new normal. And so that's the reason. Is everybody comfortable with that? Any yeah. questions? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. We were talking earlier that we may need a booster shot down the line. Mm -hmm. Will that be done here? Again? If that is the case, my hope would be that yes, that would occur here. Okay. Um, we are currently working with our CVS uh, partner as well as Health Direct, our pharmacy, 
to actually get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. For those that have not had the vaccine yet, new employees, things of that nature, so it's one shot. I have not heard in the works of Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson that a booster is necessary or developed yet. I think it's there's speculation, and if, if you want my opinion, I would say that yes, the COVID vaccine will become similar to that flu shot, um, where it is on an annual basis, and that you do get it once a year. Again, that's my gut, that's my opinion, that's my speculation, that's what I've been kind of reading a little bit about, but there's no definitive on that. But to your question of if it's offered, will we, will we have a clinic here? And I want to tell you 99 point you know, percent, yes, it will be here. Because again, CBS will be coming back in to administer flu shots and things of that nature. And so again, through all this, I think CBS, and I want to say the U.S. has kind of learned that access is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And we now have this infrastructure kind of to know that, okay, we can do this. And so why not continue it? Although let's not have to put a, the rush like we had to on it. So again, to your question, yes, my hope and ultimate goal would be that everything would be able to be provided here at East Castle Place. Again, that's why you move into a senior living community um, in my regard, um, is that maintenance free lifestyle and that's a very important safety aspect as well to why you live here. So, What other questions? Hmm. The sale, sale of Newcastle? Sale of Newcastle. Is that going to affect us? So um, the what? question was brought up, um, and actually um, a resident yesterday said that they heard from one of the Newcastle friends mm -hmm. that they were sold. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I emailed the executive director this morning just for some information um, on it, um, as I've, I want to make sure I'm not mm -hmm. adding or, or saying anything wrong and so I don't want to elaborate too much on it Carolyn because I do not have all the facts um, but the notation that Newcastle Place has been sold um, is is accurate to a point um, life care services LCS who manages East Castle Place uh, will no longer be managing Newcastle Place um, and that uh, again East Castle Place played zero part in that I want to make sure that that's that's aware, again, that's a, that's a, a different entity at mm -hmm. this point. Um, and, and I don't know how that happened or, or what occurred all there, and so I'm not gonna speculate on that. Uh, but I do know that um, as of, I believe July 1 is the date that I'm seeing, um, Life Care Services will exit, and I believe Life Space, which again, going from Life Care Services to Life Space, <laughs> adds to the confusion, right? Life Space will take on the management of East Ca or I'm sorry of New Castle Place. Life Care Services is dedicated. The board of directors has a contract with Life Care Services for the next at least two years. I mm -hmm. want to say it's always renegotiated every three to four. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Life Care Services will be exiting New Castle Place, and Life Space will be uh, the new management company for Newcastle Place. Okay. So then would we lose our contract with Laundry then? So great follow-up question. The question being, would our contract um, that we currently hold with Laundry, for those of you that may be viewing this that are newer to East Castle Place, we do Newcastle's Laundry. Um, we have a laundry department here that um, drives back and forth to Newcastle. I'm not sure of that, okay. um, and, and to be honest, in, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that would be on their highest priority okay. to change. Okay. Um, and so again, that's not even a conversation I've been able to really have with sure. Eric. Uh, but again, great, great question, and I would say no um, at this point. The other shared service is is IT, um, and so yeah, again, that's right. um, I'm working with Jason Hedman, our director to make sure everybody's uh, taken care of and things of that nature. So again, the impact East Castle Place is really numb um, at this point in time um, to you as residents. Um, but again, I wanna make sure that I'm able to, to really spell that out um, for um, you um, so that you know the facts 
Um, and, and again, I just don't quite have those. So sure, thank um, you. you're welcome. But yes, mm -hmm. that, that is, uh, you know, the, the change of management mm -hmm. um, is, is occurring. Mm -hmm. What other questions? Um, I could share with, the, with uh, you ladies and those that are viewing, Laura Wegler should be returning tomorrow. Um, so um, that is exciting and so again um, either, either tomorrow or Monday and so again um, I haven't put out any official announcement or anything of that nature just because again as much as that confirmation of Laura returning either tomorrow or Monday I don't want to get that wrong so if you see Laura please welcome her back we're excited obviously to get Laura back in action and, and again um, I know that um, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to the Community Life team uh, over the last six weeks or so plus oh um, in, in taking on, yeah. you know, a number of things. And to be honest, a, a big thank you to Mike Breaver um, as Mike has taken on some of those responsibilities as well for me, um, as well as, you know, the try, you know, try to support the team. So again, the team is great there. Thank you, uh, Cooper. Thank you, Scott. Tyrone, Ray, Hope, Jerry, <laughs> I'm going to Pastor Epley, Gary, and Juana. <laughs> and if you're watching the CLS team and I forgot you, I apologize. I didn't mean to. I think I got everybody. Rewatch the film if I missed anybody. Uh, but no, the CLS team is absolutely incredible and mm -hmm. uh, a huge shout out to them um, for everything they're doing. Willie and uh, the uh, interns down at the fitness center as well. I want to make sure I get you. So, uh, well, Cooper's outstanding. Yeah. yeah, he wears so many hats. <laughs> yes, he's uh, <laughs> yes to say the least. So, uh, Cooper, that was a shout out to you. So he follows through on everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, we're very very fortunate to have that team um, in place, and so again. Again, and we also ramped up activities in April and we're continuing to ramp up in, in May. And so again, um, the Cinco de Mayo event, that team and, and the director team stepped up in, in my absence. And so again, just a uh, thank you. And again, residents have done that as well. I mean, um, I wanna give a, a thank you to the fall preventions program um, that Kathy Johnson along with Willie and, and Jenna um, and Teresa uh, all put on. Uh, last week, and so if you haven't seen that, um, I encourage you to, to talk with Kathy Johnson, Willie, Teresa, myself uh, about what we're doing for fall preventions. Because again, falls happen, and again, um, unfortunately, it, it's very prevalent in the senior population, and that's not, uh, you know, that that's not. A, I don't want to. It's a bad thing, but it's not something to hide or anything like that. There's there's things that we can do to to help, and so again. Um, again, I want to make sure and help out Teresa and say, make sure you're wearing your pendant. Um, if, if you do fall uh, and you're on the floor and the pendant is in the drawer, it doesn't do too much good. And so again, we, we just, I want to reiterate that to wear your pendants. That's why, you know, we, we have those response teams. So, um, but again, that's the resident initiatives and things of that nature. Yesterday, Jessica um, did a, kind of a farewell. Uh, she was our student artist in residence. And so I'm happy to uh, announce that we'll have a, another student artist in residence in the fall join us. And so um, I had the opportunity to, to meet her um, and uh, I will, will be excited to welcome her. Um, so uh, again, thank you, Jessica. And again, just the Community Life team in general. And, and again, it's, it's exciting for me to be able to share this because we're getting back to, to these in person and, and the active lifestyle I think that we all missed um, over the last 14 months. So That string trio that they had here was wonderful. Paul Howard and the string trio, um, you know, and I think that's, that's something, again, that entertainment that we want to bring back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're having a Memorial Day or a cookout at the end yeah. of the month for both, uh, for you as residents, it'll be uh, Memorial Day, um, you know, the, the Memorial Day garb of hot dogs and hamburgers fresh mm -hmm. from the grill. Sure. So, um, you know, so so trying to institute some some fun of the summer. So, um, outside. So what, what other when questions? the rent 
I don't like that word, renters. When when that area mm -hmm. moves out, will there be construction starting in those units? Sure. So the question was when when the transitions happen, um, what what will that look like? And mm -hmm. so just to bring up to speed and. And I'll do a high-level presentation at the end of the month, um, okay. starting with the resident council next week, Thursday, on, on kind of a renovation update and where we stand, because obviously April was the announcement. Mm -hmm. And again, filtering through and, and making sure that the residents that are transitioning um, have all the support. Um, and again, this is still a, a tough topic for me to discuss, yeah. but um, it's exciting. And so, um, we have selected a general contractor, C.G. Schmidt, um, if you're familiar with them. The sign is out already. Nope, that's the Holton Brothers. Okay. Holton Brothers did the tuck pointing, so they will um, take that sign down as the tuck pointing project is completing. But uh, we are about to submit to city for approval um, for some schematic designs. Um, and so AG Architects, who also assisted in the building of this, have been brought on um, from the very beginning. C.G. Schmidt, um, and then an interior design firm, uh, hopefully will be selected by the end of this month. Once we get the schematic designs, we'll be able to really start to dig in. Um, we're still at kind of that 50,000 foot level, um, but construction will not start until 2022. Um, again, we have to get through city approvals, we have to get through construction documents, mm -hmm. we have to get through financing, um, because the project is ballpark figures $20 million, mm -hmm. uh, ballpark. And so we're gonna finance that. Um, and again, we need input from you. And so we're gonna have focus groups and on different areas. Again, we have a general concept of what the spaces are gonna look like and what, what direction we're going, but your input's gonna be needed for what those spaces from a pro programmatic standpoint look like, as well as uh, what selections, you know? Um, ultimately, you don't want me selecting what carpet goes in this entire community. That would be a nightmare. Thank God we have an interior design firm that does this for a living. Um, but they know that your input's gonna be necessary. We want staff input, because at the end of the day, we need this to be a very effective and efficient project for them as well. And their input's gonna be vital. And so, um, you know, that that's kind of, again, Carolyn, you mentioned, is construction gonna start right away? And then I took it off on this large tangent. Um, but construction is slated to start in February, March. Um, now, if we can push that up, because again, things open up and, and things, the city goes better and we're able to do some things and get started on some of the demolition, by all means, we probably will. Um, but again, that I don't have. Um, I have a, a large meeting offsite next week, Wednesday, with the general contractor and the architect to kind of walk through phasing and what that looks like. And that means, you know, well, parts of the campus are gonna be impacted. Um, and for how long? And again, I want to make sure you as residents know that because again, if you've ever been through construction or a whole renovation, mm. it's not always the fun parts, right? And there's going to be some headaches. And so what does that look like? Is it, you know, if we get an entire space for four weeks, but it's offline for that four weeks, is that better than taking part of it offline, but then the project takes eight weeks, you know, making some of those decisions. So. Again, those are questions I don't have answers to yet. And so, um, but you know, those, those transitions are happening, and uh, again, the spaces will open up. It's just we need to make sure we have permitting and all that fun stuff. So, uh, there's a big group going to St. Rita's Square, and I'm so happy that they'll all be together. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, there is a number of residents that will be heading to St. Rita that or have headed to St. Rita's mm. Square. So. Um, Again, finding those partners and making sure those transitions are as smooth as possible. So, mm -hmm. and this is this is tough. So, what other questions? Um, well, a couple of things. Just uh, again, COVID related. COVID announcements will be going out bi-weekly moving forward, um, unless obviously there's a, nece a necessity for more. So you'll receive one today in your mailbox, and then every other Thursday or Friday moving forward. Um, we have not had a COVID-19 case in employees or residents in the last, in the month of April. Um, so in over six weeks, um, which has been very good. Um, and again, 
we continue to see that trend uh, go down, which is what we want. Um, and I think the vaccination rates continue to improve. I think that there's, it's now very, it's open to everyone. And so again, encourage your loved ones if they haven't um, been able to get the vaccine to, to encourage them. Um, and again, I look forward to uh, the May flowers um, and uh, the, the, the summer programming that's starting. I know we're talking um, the symphony, we've been in talks with them to get them. And they said season ticket holders have all the say, so uh, we'll be reaching out to them. We've worked with our drivers to make sure, you know, we have transportation to and from. So again, um, those are the pieces that, that are coming back and I'm excited to share that. And so again, um, we'll, be, we'll be walking through all those pieces. Good job. You really did a good job through the, what is it, 14 months? Well, again, it's all of you, credit to all of you. Um, again, and credit to, to the team that, that works here uh, for, for getting through this last 14 months. And again, there's still uh, the pieces out there that we need to be cautious of and, and are monitoring. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's been 14 months. So, um, you know, that dining room piece, I'm, I'm excited to, to walk through there later this evening and, mm -hmm. and see it. So mm -hmm. We have to encourage more people to come down yeah. and realize it's so much better. Hot and crispy salads. <laughs> <laughs> Cold and crispy salads, hopefully, and hot and crispy <laughs> food. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's quite an improvement. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate everybody. And with that, I'll start off this. Thing. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody.